away from him. He's potentially able to set up a very good flank from this position, but here comes a very fast push. Flank won't be good for much unless SK can hold on to the site for a few moments longer. Nice kill from Phelps, falls back afterwards into the bank position, daring Gambit to try to push him. But they will not, so they hold with the bomb, and Fur will come in from the back. Adren will be unsuspecting. Yeah, and Taco's still looking to flank when Hobbit's looking for that, but Hobbit's got to go back to the side because his teammate's going to drop surely. Fur gets taken down, Taco takes the flanker out, and there it is, Hobbit now versus three. He has a lot to do here. He does not have the pistol for it. I'm not sure if the defuse is being held at the moment. Seeing lots of bodies on the sides, and indeed, the defuse is in for SK Gaming. So that is the first round, and again, Fur continues his aggression on long. Mo was on the angle, but that will go too far, that flashbang. Fur unaffected, looking to get more kills. It gets another one. <laughs> Always good for one, at the very least. On the CT side, you don't typically want to play for a 1-1 one -one trade, but, you know, it's Fur. Fur can do whatever the hell he wants. He has a very strong team to back him up, and he always gets a lot of information. And this information can help Fallen to understand how he should position himself. That's a nice connection. Doja down to 16 as they may press now into Phelps' position. And all the meanwhile, we'll have Cold Zero rotating from B to A to support this defense, as the pressure is really felt. But the bomb is towards T-Spawn at the moment, but again, we have Taco in a very forward position there. So they don't have to worry about B at all. They have all the information again. They don't have vision of short B for the time being, although maybe Phelps would get a sound cue. So there is a gap in the defenses. It has to be a confidence play from SK here. And the bomb's moving away from the B bomb site. Phelps will hear the footsteps. Mo and Fitch are both running around. There's two out of three players. But still, yeah, now, now Taco starting to rotate. 25 second mark. Phelps playing it slow. There's the bomb. Shot missed by the AWP. And he's buying lots of time for his team now. Taco starting to speed up on the flank here. This is really awkward for the AWP, but Mo manages to deliver the kill. 15 seconds, and they've got to clear the site. Those who are just standing on long. He's in the ready. 16 HP. The flashbang is there. But so is Cold Zero to shut things down. 5 0 for SK. No answer for Gambit yet. I just want tabs. On what's going on? It's fallen out. Oh, repositioning. That's a God. beautiful snap there. Fitch is no more. Perhaps he never was. A distant memory now. Thanks to Fallen. And you see the the, the setup from from Fallen and Fur. Fallen, uh, sorry, Fur was around the smoke on the high ground, taken down by Mo as he starts to get aggressive in a different position. This is an entirely different setup from SK in this round, and this is going to waste time for Gambit. They need to identify where these players are. Fallen, last seen in the connector area, now on a trot on his own towards a long position. How can Mo get there? Taking a shot. Oh, Fallen, he's getting really cheeky now. I'm sure he's, he's going to go for the kill. And there it is, the no-scope, shutting him down again. Four versus two. Gambit have no idea what's going on. The bomb is miles away as well. They've got 40 seconds left. Someone's got to run back for it and give up map control. And in the meantime, it's probably a Dren who's got to make something happen here. SK look like they are in insane form at the moment. What Easy are they doing? For Phelps. They're falling a bit more space to Gambit. And that's smart. I mean, they've conditioned Gambit now to be fearful of everything. So Gambit are just going to be using utility anyway. So now they don't have to risk anything. But, oh, that angle from Fallen! And the timing is good. And it trends on the scoreboard. There we go. Now we've got some stuff happening. Gambit catching SK. Good stuff from them. Now press onto the A site. Took them the minute mark to get anywhere close to the toilets, but... Fallen missing the shot may prove fatal for SK in this round. Taco still on the B-bomb site. Only two CTs to defend this site. And down they go, leaving Taco alone. How much he can do here. He does have an AK-47 though, so it's always nice to keep hold of that. But at the same time, their economy is amazing and Gambit's is not. So getting some kills on Gambit will be very, very problematic for Gambit. So that's the play for, here from Taco. Get as many kills as possible. Let's see, let's see if he can get something here. Emerging from bank. Unbeknownst to Gambit. Taco wants to try to make it safe, though. He's got a smoke. And they've all backed off. Do it, Taco. Do it. You dirty animal. Oh, has he left it too late? I think he might have. I don't think he's got time. Dozy, oh! I wondered. I respect the combo towards the A site, but Fallen's going very deep on his own. 
This is such a scary position for Gambit because SK, they have so many rounds, so much money. They can take all kinds of risks. Fallen, can he do something against this? Oh, yes, oh, a frag there somehow. God. That's really impressive. And now it's down to a fur to hold on to things around the bathrooms, but that'll be okay. Gambit will not have much presence there. And after the uh, explosive start, things will start to calm down. The fact he gets one kill there is amazing. Considering the angle and trying to avoid the flashbangs, those he's got to be careful. Phelps has been boosted. Don't see this boost so often. It was very common in the initial months as overpass as the uh, map was being figured out, but not so much. And you see Fitch getting caught off guard there. Definitely wasn't expecting that. Once again, the bomb is at the very uh, back of Connector. So we are sub one minute and Gambit may have to send somebody to go and collect it. It looks like it might be Mo running back from the long position. In the meantime, Hobbit once again creeping into Monster and Cold Zero waiting very patiently indeed. That's a two missed flashbangs for Cold, so he doesn't really know what's going on there. Messed them both up, rare miss from him. Taco on a short B position, got to be careful about his angles because the door is open. You won't hear somebody come out. And there's Dozier taken down, Hobbit's still alive, they know he's been tagged, so there could be some confidence. Mo around the Monster area and Hobbit will join him. 19 seconds, surely they're running to their doom. Yeah, the positioning here is really, really good. They'll be able to crash through the angle, but Cold will take down Mo, who doesn't have the sense to crouch. And that's going to be the round over. Hobbit trying to save the AWP here, and he should be able to get out of dodge in time. He will, but this is a fantastic reset round for from SK onto Gambit. Ooh, should be from Gambit's default, from Gambit's sort of pre-planned opening to a round, and a lot of grenades as well. So it just makes things awkward. And We'll see a very fast play into Sewers. This is a good change of pace from Gambit. Mo picks off Fallen there towards the Monster Tunnel, and that will give it a decisive advantage into that B bomb site. But they need to be cautious because SK, they have loads of players there, and there's already a push from Fur. Fur has already <laughs> understood for his team that this is a dedicated B play, so the players on B can just take good positions, hold, and Fur can contain. Ooh, that's a big one, though. Hobbit with the frag. Now SK get desperate. Fur needs to make a play, surely. They're looking, they're looking for it as well. Yeah, they respect their opponents so much. They live in fear of these Brazilians. Double AWP uh, play at the, at the beginning of that round towards the B bomb site for SK. Cold Zero was boosted up, looking to the short position, but he was flashed off by Gambit. Fulham went for a hyper aggressive play through Monster with the scope all the way up the stairs, but got taken down by an expectant moan. Here we are, five versus three. But now Gambit still holding their position. Surely must realize that the CTs must have taken risks and uh, must all be around the site. What is the play, Gambit? Adrenaline Mo moving towards the monster tunnel. Adosia alone on short and Fitch waiting for a rotation through connector. And they go, can't live in fear against SK. And as Cole's here with one, he can't get anything else. Dozier will silence him for the time being. And now for not really too much he can do, but maybe get some extra f uh, damage. And that will be the case, taking out Fitch. Two orbs though, now for Gambit as they pick up Colts. And they'll be able to take the round. So really nicely done by Gambit. And if we think about how the frags, how they got that 5v3 advantage, it was the initial pick on to Fallen through the monster tunnel by Mo. And then the next one was just a, a, a smoke kill. Just a very unfortunate for SK, very fortunate for Gambit. But what I'm trying to get at here is that it doesn't feel like a consistent approach from Gambit. So they've got to be very careful that they don't get reset again. They need to somehow string rounds together. Yeah, and to some degree, SK are gifting them frags by being overly, overly, overly aggressive, just playing their, the mental advantage, essentially. SK, they'll actually be a bit more passive this time around. Got fallen towards a long, and he'll nail Mo. That's one player down. Ooh, taking the single scope out very hard. Second shot attempted, and we'll whiff, but the damage has been done here by Fallen. That's Five versus four for SK. It's a complete lack of respect as well, but I love it. It is great to see. Fitch hasn't got a kill in this game yet. He is zero for 10 at the moment. Worth mentioning. I mean, for the time being, he seems to be uh, playing a passive role and just hovering around Connector. If Hobbit makes his way towards Shortby later on, perhaps he will try to stop a pinch through the door. So he's not really in the best position to, with which to engage. However, he should have more than zero kills. 55 seconds on the clock. 
four versus five in favor of SK. Playing around smokes once again, and it is indeed the fallen and fur combo. A Dren with a dropped AWP, missing a shot though. Will SK identify that he was boosted in that position? That's two of the four players found. And Hobbit's often been uh, playing around the monster tunnel, and he seems to be curious about it now. They have enough nades for a set piece execution, but they don't have the positioning yet for a set piece. That is kind of the issue for Gambit at the moment. NSK have five players alive. They can start poking and prodding as well. Cold Zero in a great position. Easy kill for him. The second, though, is beautiful. And Teammate. now it's a very big problem for Gambit. They have to rely on the players out of Monster Tunnel. It's a good entry from Adren, but 10 seconds to plant the bomb. Do they have the time to do this? Hobbit has to push forwards, but he can't. Phelps will lay down a spray of bullets, a hail of fire. 13-2 scoreline. What a scoreline it is. Almo going to be going very quick up short there. Cold is ready for it. Gets only the one though, Taco on the anchor position, looking to do the damage. The smoke will be very nice for him to play around. They're forced through it to take the battle against Taco, but he looks very strong for this one. Trade it out and Fallen misses a shot there. Pistol comes out, so gonna be looking pretty good. Back into the AWP, another whip from Fallen, and with it, a chance for Gambit. Trent looking to find the last player, and it's, if he's pressed his tab, he's gonna find that it's Fur. It's never a good prospect because Fur can be anywhere. He can do anything. Adren very smart though. He's playing the time. There's plenty of it at the moment. And the bomb is on the short position. It's very hard to understand though exactly where Fur is going to play from and how Fur will take this decision. But Adren, despite getting a drop on him, Fur is too quick. And lead. Looking for the first shot. Oh, there it is. Quick Molotov coming in, nice here from SK. The timing's very good, the spacing's good. They get a quick kill, but there's still players in the bomb site to fight back, but there doesn't seem to be much fight in them here as they get absolutely annihilated by the offense of SK. Although Adren and Dozier will swoop in here to save the day, and they're doing a decent job of it, just down to Adren now, but he can't make it work against... Four just pressing on with that MAC-10, and he is, of course, meant to with the MAC-10. He's all about the information now. Adren knows where he is. Should be an easy kill. There it is for Adren. And that's the Mac 10 collected. Be interesting to see if he plays with that over the Deagle, depending on the situation. And indeed, to remind you, SK Gaming, should they win this match, would be, or well, either of the teams to win this match would be the first Legends team, returning Legends team to qualify into the playoffs here. Been a crazy, crazy tournament so far. Now, SK, four versus five. It will rely on the attack onto the B bomb site, but four players are there for Gambit. Here you go, the grenades. Smoke going towards the balcony position. Fitz just can't frag anything in this in this game so far. Mo and Hobbit trying to stay alive, trying to fight for survival. Now it's down to Fallen to do as much damage as possible in this round, but he can't really do much. SK trying to play the numbers game towards B, but this time the gamble pays off for Gambit. Yeah, that will be the end of them. Toast. And I think, you know, you, you made a good point you know, that Gambit, it is quite possible that they would feel a little bit scared on their CT sides. And we know that SK is not a team you want to give space on their, C their T side. You, like, you need to have an aggressive CT side and overpass. Vega also showed us just uh, how good that can be, how strong it is to play aggressive CT sides. But if you give SK lots of space, they're going to run set pieces and eventually one of those set pieces is going to work, you're going to be broken and they're going to win the game at this rate. So, SK just holding position for now. They have control towards the bathrooms as well. Cold is sitting there, so Gambit don't have info that it will be a B play for sure just yet. But there's not much presence being shown towards A from SK. And that's enough for Gambit to have four people in and around the B bomb site. And Fitch is surely in for a field day. 19 seconds, SK, oh, that's flashbang's absolutely perfect, but Fitch is just delivering the kills. So is Hobbit with the first one, actually. Keeps stealing the frags away from Fitch, unfortunately for Fitch. Three on three, though, nine seconds for the bomb to get planted. Fallen is nowhere near a push here. SK seem hell-bent on the B bomb site in these rounds and not really doing much to push Gambit away from A or try and spread them across. So Gambit just have the numbers in B for these executes and they're holding. May mean SK face three players instead of four. And here come the grenades. This will be tough to hold. Hobbit goes down straight away, as does Dozier. And now Fitch has not had a great game, but now will be a time to turn up here. They desperately need him to 
do they realize, do SK have any idea that he's in this smoke or that he can be there? Mo, he, maybe he runs distraction here as Fitch now dives towards the monster position. And they still don't know where he is. He's an unknown agent behind enemy lines. And what operation can he perform here? Well, there's one as a second assassination from Fitch as he strikes now creates all the space for his teammates now to absolutely destroy this round for SK. Another from Fitch, absolutely what he needed to do for his team. The round for Gambit. How often do you see that? How did he survive? Oh, actually just slow pushing monster here. Eventually they're gonna charge in, looking for the entry frags. Fitch falls out of position. No uh, shenanigans from you this round, Mr. Fitch, as Fels will deal with him. And they'll keep pressing forwards. The smoke's covering the bomb site, covering their approach, covering them for the frags, for the plants. And there's no trading here from Gambit. Four versus two, Mo on the low ground, Adrent on the high. Looking for something, and there it is. Mo by Graffiti, they've got the information now. Still smokes on the site. Starting to disappear. Three flashes on SK1 being deployed at the moment. That's a great flash. And CTs have flashes of their own. Still alive for the time being. Smoking off to short position. Cold Zero rotating towards the monster area. No, he's pushing short, in fact, as is Fur. They might even be booting over the smoke. On the sandbags is Cold Zero. Surely they won't expect the smoke on the high ground taken down. Adren, two versus one. Cold Zero jumps, spots him, and swats him. Match point for again. The early Molotov to stop the CTs pushing the short B position, and it's a, it's a very strong uh, area to have as a CT, which is what the, why that Molotov is thrown at the beginning of rounds by the T side. Makes it very difficult for SK's persistence towards the B site to be successful. So that Molotov is almost always thrown when the T's have the money for it. But now SK finally successful on B, start to change things up and have a more traditional setup. One lurker towards the B-bomb site, which is Taco, and the rest of them will spread out towards A. Phelps with an angle on connector. Fur keeping an eye on long, and Cold and Fallen will creep towards the toilets. I think a Dren was just spotted in the lose, and he is backing off, and Mo is retreating as well, so they're forcing the CTs back. That is very important. All the space in the world to play with. Overpass is the playground of SK. As they look to set up their perhaps match winning play. Now, it's a bit troublesome to be so blind as Gambit are at the moment. And it's a bit troublesome to allow SK to set up whatever they want. But perhaps Gambit can get it done on clean shots, clean setups, and considered plays. As the counter grenades start to rain in as well to slow down the progress of SK. They have two players towards the B side of the map here that can run distraction, maybe get entries towards B as the presence comes towards A. Good start from Mo, though. They were selling the fake SK, playing the clock down, and uh, Gambit were believers, but now Mo is allowed to do his work on the A side. Those are to trade immediately. Five seconds, and then nowhere near the bomb. It's falling apart for SK in this particular round, and their money kind of sucks. Gambit surviving with four players, picking up the second sniper rifle. Might start seeing going back towards that later on, but there's a push from Gambit around the fountain area. They see a lot of information. Oh, that's a nice one from Hobbit. And with the boost there towards the sewers, eliminates the presence of SK. It's now gone from there. Phelps looking for info around the connector area. Not going too crazy, however. I think he's just making sure nothing crazy is going on as uh, SK will look to bring the crazy towards B, and they will need crazy with only two rifles and two CZ. Fallen has all the remaining grenades. So one smoke, maybe facing an overreaction from uh, Gambit, but that's a great play from Dozier. The spray gets tons of information for the team. They know a boost might be coming, but Fitch is still vulnerable to it. How does he get caught by that? Ooh, Taco, oh my God, he's trying all sorts of shenanigans here. Now it could actually just work out for SK with a frag there, evening up the numbers, well, ever so slightly. He's still down a man. A, what? A trend? How does he lose that one? Absolutely ridiculous. The trade does come in. But again, SK, they're running out of time here. 30 seconds to plant this bomb, and Cold Zero only has a CZ. Taco has to do it all with that AK-47 of his, and they're trained on his position. So he looks to go for the Jiggle Peak here to try to get himself into a spot where he can do something here. Give some space to Cold. Taco has to win a fight. Cold's picked up an AK, taken down by Hobbit as Dozier. Rattles on to Taco as well. Another round. Good positions. They won one of those two big, fast B rounds with the AKs, and they're going for it again, James. 
Yeah, the Molotov forcing Fish out of his position. He's blind, he's doing the best he can, but he's taking a lot of damage. But SK, Taco, Fur taken down, smokes around the site, variant. Molotov to stop the plant that allows the CTs to get into even better positions. Things slowing down now. Phelps only good for the one kill, leaving Fallen and Cold Zero with much to do. Boost over the smoke once again, looking for Mo on the high ground, but Fitch has just jumped into position. Who will they find first? There's Fitch, got to get out of there now. They're rotating out. Fallen could have actually re-smoked the balcony, but he's choosing to just see what is going on on the high ground. So many rounds, Gambit have just stacked everybody at the back of B, and there is no flank. Cold Zero being left outside the B bomb site. So will he go for a suicide fake? A Dren with a jump spot. He's seen Fallen. Surely he's seen the bomb. Or maybe he hasn't. I don't know. Hard to tell. Doesn't seem like he saw Fallen. Fallen really lucky in that spot. Has he seen him now? Still no movement from the rest of the teams. The rest of the players, sorry, and he's caught out completely. Really unlucky for a dread. And there's Cold Zero. The bomb, though, has it been spotted? Hobbit, the last man standing, he's going towards B. Hasn't seen it because Dread was looking the wrong way. Rotates away, and there it is. Fallen and Cold make it work. Massive rotation from Fallen. 16 to 10. SK are legends once again. It took a pretty crazy clutch to get there, but indeed. I mean, that CT side was so devastatingly strong, I think, even though Gambit had a quite a resurgence on their CT side. I think a lot of teams are going to be looking at this game and thinking, oh, right.